NBA news that involves the New York Knickerbockers. Now, we all know what happened. The Nova Knicks have fully formed. Dante DiVincenzo, Mikael Bridges, Jalen Brunson, and, of course, Josh Hart. So, Craig, here's a simple yeah. question for you. How much can the off-court chemistry that these four obviously have translate to on-court wins? Well, isn't that everything, right? I mean, every team's got some level of talent. The question is, can they play well together? Are there enough balls to go around? Does everyone understand their role? Are you going to get mad at me if I don't pass on an open look because I take the shot? And all those little teeny things that you know, don't show up in a stat sheet that mean a lot and ultimately equate to winning championships, well, the Knicks have it. To me, the pressure's not on the four guys that won a championship at Villanova to play well together because they're going to naturally play well together. You know, people don't remember the story that Dante DiVincenzo and Josh Hart hated each other at Villanova. They, they hated each other at Villanova on their way to winning you know, a championship. And now, of course, they're good friends and they put it behind them. The pressure's on Tom Thibodeau. The pressure's not on the guys, because the guys are going to do what they do. They're going to play well together. And the reason I said the pressure's on Tom Thibodeau, who has been, frankly, the best coach we've had here in a very, very long time and got a lot of guys to buy into his style of basketball, which usually, you know, kind of, you know, outserves its welcome by year three because pros don't like playing defense. They don't like that militant style of coaching anymore. And they make so much money you know, they're not going to put up with it, and owners typically bend over backwards to make the players happy. Here's why there's pressure on Thibodeau. You know, the New York Knicks did not get to the Eastern Conference Finals last year and have it in a very, very long time. And while we had a great run of 150 games, and there's an expectation we win more than 50 this year, and if we're healthy, we better get to an Eastern Conference Final or beyond. There's a guy sitting out there that everyone's talking about that they will go to in a New York City second if the Tom Thibodeau style of coaching wears thin on Brunson oh, say and it. Bridges say it. and Hart and DiVincenzo. Jay Wright's just sitting there. Jay Wright, who's a, a very good commentator now and one of the great college coaches, has New York ties, coached at Hofstra, obviously had all the success at Villanova. These are his guys. These are the guys that he plucked out of high schools from across America and turned into champions. Do not think for a minute that if the Knicks, and I don't think this will happen, if the Knicks got off to a slow start, do not think for a minute that you're not going to hear the name Jay Wright. So the pressure to me is on Tom Thibodeau, not on the guys. You know what, I, um, I, th I think what we're seeing is that uh, Thibodeau and a lot of these teams in the NBA, especially in the Eastern Conference, are recognizing that they have to construct or put together a roster of guys that can compete with the Boston Celtics because they don't have a, well, I guess now they have a bona fide superstar in Jalen Brunson. But if you look at what Philadelphia is doing, I, th I think Philadelphia is the second best team uh, to the Getting Paul Celtics. George, okay. There's a, a healthy Giannis with uh, or the, with Dame. They got something to prove coming back this year. So I think what we're seeing is that they're they going to have to find a put together a team that can defend, that can score. Yep. They have a, a, a guy on the roster and the starting lineup that can do everything well. So uh, I don't think the pressure's on him. I just they, I just think that uh, they are recognizing that they need a better collective five to compete with. Here's Baltimore. also the good news: when they were healthy and they weren't healthy together a lot, when, once they got Ananobi and Precious, uh, they were 12 and two. You know, before Randall went down for the season with the shoulder injury. That I mean, I'm not saying you can keep up that pace of winning, but this team they figured out very quickly how to play very very well together. The one guy who is under zero pressure from this point on this year is our president general manager. Mr. Leon Rose, uh, and consider this. When Leon Rose got the job, give me my full screen there, boys. Oh. I want you to look at the roster we had. Kevin Knox, our guy Tim Hardaway Jr., who they drafted, of course. Emmanuel Moutier, you got Dotson, and you got Alonzo. I don't even remember. I don't think in the league anymore, yeah. right? <laughs> so you, so that, that's the team that Leon Rose inherited. That's the team on the right that we're going to go to war with now next year in trying to beat the Boston Celtics. And, and if I may, one other little note, if I may. That's our, you know, yeah, you get the, that's the roster, great roster, great roster. Maybe the best roster uh, uh, in all basketball right there. Uh, those guys are all going to be uh, in the canyon of heroes about a year from now celebrating a parade. 
and a championship in their ride shares here. First you're not all, allowed to come to New York because you're bad juju. You know first, that. first of all, when I look at that roster, yeah, I see that roster definitely got better. Talk about it. Everybody in New York should be happy about that roster getting better. Talk about it some more. But when you look at that roster, yeah. everybody at this table but you saying that team is not winning anything. That's the best what? team in basketball. That's the best team in basketball because what do the Celtics have that's better than that? Literally everybody on the floor is better than that. <laughs> <laughs> Literally everybody on the floor. He, he, he got a point. What if, I, what, if, what, if I, what if I just focus on the right side of the screen? <laughs> what do the Celtics have coming off the bench better than that? Even the Celtics bench is better. All right. I, what if I go to the left side of the screen? Mitchell Robinson. What do the Celtics have Mitchell on the left Robinson side? Robinson is going to be a starting center. Well, we have an issue with Mitchell Robinson. A little a issue. Big issue. No, a li- by the way, don't. Here's what I love about what you just said there. There's this crazy story out there that Mitchell Robinson is a liability. That Mitchell Mitchell Robinson defensively is a pain in everyone's ass. He's a great defensive player. Okay. He cannot score the basketball. He cannot make free throws. He's got to come off the floor on offense. Final two minutes of a playoff game. That's close for sure. But defensively. Is he an asset or a That liability? guy is an asset, my friend. Right. That guy is a shot swatter. So you know, he's Rudy best. Gobert. He's a he's a he's a, a low Rudy level. Rudy Gobert can't hold Mitchell Robinson's man, jock get defensively. Get out of town. You know that. What's wrong with he's you? He's the man? worst defensive player in the history of basketball. I don't know what you was on yesterday, but you uh, clearly lost your mind. Uh, <laughs> now I want to show you Mitchell Robinson better than Rudy Gobert. Oh, Come please, on. defensively. Yes, defensive. Deep point. I first, call him deep point. Yeah. How, many, how many defensive players of the year have Mitchell Robertson won? None. Exactly. Yeah, you know, because he got hurt. Rudy, Rudy Gobert also, he's a liability on offense as Mitchell yeah. Robertson. But yeah. he's still better than Mitchell Robertson on offense. Um, if I may, gentlemen, he's French. Thank you. Know, you. you know what? Who is? Mitchell he, Robinson? No, not Mitchell <laughs> Robinson. The, the Gobert. Gobert. Listen, he eats crepes listen, for Mitchell London. Robinson has if, two fouls if, right now. <laughs> if, if, you're gonna be a start, if you're gonna be a starting center, yeah. if you're gonna be a liability on offense, I mean, get your Ben Wallace. I mean, not, not, a, not a Mitchell Robinson. <laughs> Overrated player, by the way. Who? Who? Ben Wallace. Man, get out of here. Does not belong don't, in the Hall of Fame. Do that. He's don't not a Hall of Famer. Oh you have lost your mind. He's not a Hall of Famer. You lost your line. That's one of the most I'm, take, I'm taking away your old basketball official. That is no, one of the most really egregious that. mistakes the no, Hall of Famer's ever made. Ben Wallace was never a Hall of Famer. He's also delusional. He thinks that the Knicks are going to win the championship this year. They already is have. They already won the championship. Yeah, it's not delusion. It's called. Come on, man. A little delusion. Don't do that. Much. Wow. Hey there. Thank you so much for watching the Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1. So check them out too.